It's unbelievable. It really is. And, and, you know, so we've had a chance to get through it quite a bit here over the last two or three weeks, you know, because you're deciding where you're going to put signs up and pictures and all that and where furniture goes and, and uh, that. And it, it's been fun because every time, you know, when it was being built, you envisioned it being one way. And then, you know, it's like building a house or anything. Once the finishing, the finish work's done, it's completely different than what you expected. And it's better. I mean, it really is, it's really nice. And, you know, what Fred and, and his staff have done about the stadium itself, you know, some of the changes, uh, you know, we look at what's inside and that we're going to use on a daily basis. And the weight room, uh, the meeting rooms, uh, the academic space isn't in that, but what, you know, that's going to do for our kids, it's unbelievable. Our offices, the Hall of Champions, it's, but it really, we got a wow factor now, where I think when, when people come in there, they're going to see that uh, this is something special. When, when he's talking about the, Fred was talking about doing $3 million right. additional changes, right. what are they, how much, and improving the, just the game, the atmosphere beyond just I think it's I think it's huge. I really do. I think I think we've got to make it where coming to Bloomington on a football Saturday is the thing to do. And you know, we, we obviously have to put a football team on the field that people want to come watch and see and, and one that's successful. But I think there's more than that uh, in, in uh, having an experience where people want to come and be a part of it. It's the thing to do. Um, I don't know why this is fresh in my mind right now, but I don't know how many thousand people were at Indianapolis Motor Speedway yesterday to watch a, to watch a car. Not all of them are, you know, racing fans, but it's the place to be. It's, it's the thing to do in Indianapolis the last weekend in January or whatever. we got to make the same thing in Bloomington the day of a home football game. Well, that's where uh, you want to be. And, and uh, again, it's our job to put a football team on the field people want to see, but there are a lot of people out there, and that kind of goes back to the sorority thing. I know all those girls aren't football fans, but we need all them and their friends and uh, who they partner with and their fraternities to come and be a part of the experience. Uh, I, I guarantee if you talk to our football players, they want to run out there in front of a big crowd. They want to run out there in front of us, you know, a group that's involved and into it. And I think, uh, you know, everything that goes with it's important. Uh, they're going to play better that way. From a recruiting standpoint, you want to bring people into an environment where they want to come play. Uh, you don't want to bring them into an environment that's stale and they're thinking, I'm not sure if that's where I want to go play football. So uh, it's so important to us on so many different levels. Uh, and that's why I think we've all worked together to, to make it something that's, that's different and something that people want to be a part of. How much more can be different, more difficult to get? Is that at a basketball school where there hasn't been really much tradition of winning uh, real long time? I'd say that's the challenge. Uh, there's no question about it. But I also know the passion that that our fans and alums have for Indiana University. And I also uh, know they're passionate about uh, athletics. And when we have had success in football, they've been passionate about that. So it's our job to, uh, to get the football team in such as, you know, uh, where we're at that, that, that people want to come be a part of. You mentioned you were asked a little bit about during the press conference about you guys switching positions. Yes. Um, what did you see from some of those during the spring? Yeah, not, not only right you know now, what? Sometimes you make moves and it, it doesn't work. And let me give you an example. I didn't mention Trey Burgess. Trey Burgess uh, is a running back. We decided to move him to linebacker um, this spring. We felt like we needed a little bit more depth. So we moved him to linebacker. And about two days into it, he got hurt. And by the time he came back, we had, all, had a bunch of tailbacks hurt. So we moved him back to tailback, and he had a great spring. And it's like, what do we even think about moving the linebacker for? You know, so sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. That's the beauty of spring practice, that you can do it. And you can undo it, you know, after 15 uh, goes at it. Once you make a move during the season, then it's pretty hard to move them back because they lose out on so much of the teaching and the fundamentals. So, um, but I, I think right now, if you go back through the program uh, and, and where we're at, if you take – I think the Jerry Smith moves the defensive tackle is really going to help. Uh, Justin Carrington, you know, is what we think of as a starting linebacker. He moved from being a tailback in the secondary. Nick Polk was a 
very good wide receiver we moved to safety now Ray Fisher we moved so you know it, it uh, but you're constantly looking and that's why I said like you know, said there you you can't go sign a free agent you know and and what we don't want to do is count on uh, new recruits to come in and fill a void it's just too tough in our league to, to count on uh, you know now they'll happen you know just like last year we had what Doss Belcher and Pagan all have a you know major impact on you know playing time and all that last year and we'll have three or four again this year I'm not sure who they are because you you never know until they get there who's going to be be ready to play so uh, that's why I think you got to take an open mind to, to move the guys from one side to the other and you mentioned mentioned Meg and obviously Mitchell uh -huh. a whole bunch of time here. right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, what sort of is the mindset that sort of goes along with that to be able to make that sort of thing? Well, I think, I think you've got to have team guys. Uh, and I think that uh, we've done a good job of recruiting over the last few, few years that we've got team guys that, that uh, uh, are going to accept their role, whatever it is, and uh, make, it, you know, make it work. And, uh, you know, it, it goes all the way back to the, the recruiting process and how you recruit them and what you tell them when you recruit them. Uh, but our guys have been very open-minded about it and... You know, like I said, the Ray Fisher thing, Ray, Ray started that whole conversation. Um, so it wasn't like something that we had to call him in and, you know, beg. So um, anyway, we'll see how, you know, some of it plays out once we get into the fall. But right now, I think we have pretty good depth at every spot, which was kind of the motivation behind the whole thing. Coach, is there one or two players that you saw during the spring that really benefited from the change to the pistol? You know what? I... This sounds good. I, I really think the offensive line. Uh, you know, we, you know, get, I don't want to get too technical now, but in the spread, we were doing just about everything from a two-point stance. You know, where everything was kind of lateral zone. You know, those guys like to put their hand in the dirt, and come out and hit somebody. And and uh, the spread offense is not really geared towards that. It's towards spreading the field and creating seams and letting fast guys run through it. Uh, but I think the the evolution of, uh, that's a pretty big word, isn't it, evolution? Um, the development of, uh, of uh, Roger Saffold, Pete Saxon, James Brewer, who is a completely different guy than he was. I mean, you've got some big, tough, physical guys. You know, I mentioned Pagan before. He's kind of ahead of his years, you know, in terms of his physical size and strength. I just think it fits him. The other thing that's different from what we've done is, is uh, you know, we've got some tight ends that can play now. And we went, uh, you know, we went, two or three years there where we really were a four or five wide receiver team all the time. Uh, and if you're going to run this kind of offense, you need, you know, having tight ends certainly helps. And, and Wagner and Zamatis and Brad Martin, those guys are all physical enough to do that now. So I think they benefit as much as anybody. Uh, I think the running backs, you know, probably like what we're doing a little bit more, but uh, I think, I, I really think if you ask the offensive linemen, they like it. Have you changed your approach to recruiting at all now that the building is actually there and you can bring through it? Are you guys? Uh, you know what? I, I think we've we really like the philosophy that we've developed over the last couple of years in our recruiting, and uh, and we've stuck with it. And again, I, I think we're trying to develop a consistency in everything we do. Um, and and I think the areas we're in on a recruiting standpoint, how we uh, bring them on campus, what we do once we get here. I think has paid off. Now, uh, you know, this group is, you know, that we're in the process of, of recruiting, um, you know, I think we've had some very favorable reaction. I, I think the building has certainly helped a lot. It'll help even more from this point on because it was still concrete to a lot of them. And it's, you know, kids, it, it was a big new building, but once they see all the bells and whistles that are in there and the weight room equipment and the, the technology and all that, I think they'll be even more impressed. But um, you know, kind of long-winded answer there. But but no, I, I don't think, we never in a staff meeting said, okay, we're going to now start recruiting differently because we have, because I think we believed in what we've done and we've recruited pretty well the last couple of years. I think we'll recruit better because of it. Um, but I, I like the way we've gone about it, particularly the areas where we're in. I, I think we're in the right areas for Indiana. You brought in That's one more question, then we have to start walking. Highly regarded kicker from Chicago. Yeah. Is he one of those three or four freshmen? That yeah, maybe could? he's got a great maybe. chance. We, we've got, uh, you know, he's going to compete. Uh, we've got a couple walk-on guys in the program we think are good. 
you know, pretty good kicker. But he, from day one, he's going to get a chance. Uh, and if he's the best, he'll go and kick. We, we had luck last year doing it with a punter. We had a kid named Hegger up, next, up in Milwaukee. And it was the same deal, and he was the best. And then by the end of the year, he was pretty good. So hopefully, but, uh, you know, he's got to earn the job.